In this lecture, I'd like to take a look at creating a grid system in the most simplest fashion using the most complex features of SAS. By using those complex features, like for loops and other features as well, we can very quickly produce a lot of code without copying and pasting or repeating ourselves over and over again. So here is my project directory, which is the SAS directory located on the desktop. Now we have the index page, which I'll load up in the browser. It hasn't got anything on it at the moment, but what it will have eventually is a really cool grid system. Now also we have the SCSS file, which is being watched by my Koala app and will be auto compiled when I save new changes to the SCSS file. It will generate a source map allowing us to map the original resource, which is our SCSS file in our browser's developer tools. And then we also have the CSS file that is being generated. So before we begin, I'd like visual representation of each step. And there's no better way than demonstrating that in the browser. So what we need to do is we need to create some DOM elements and then we can start to style our grid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a div element with the ID of grid. Now that we've created the grid, what I'd like to do is define the cells within the grid. So I am gonna have a maximum of 16 cells in a row. So I'm gonna create 16 div elements. Now all of these div elements are not able to be visible. They don't have any content, they don't have background color, they don't have dimension. So if I look at this, within the browser, you won't see anything. Even though if we right click and inspect, we can see that the body does contain a div with the ID of grid and we can see 16 div elements. Unfortunately, they have no mass and we can't see them. So let's take a look at the SCSS file. And the first thing I wanna do is target the div element with the ID of grid. And then I wanna target all of the div elements that are a direct child. So we're only going to affect these div elements that are a direct child to the grid. However, if there was a div element inside of that div, we won't affect that particular div element. We're just gonna affect these. So once we've done that, we can then take a look at giving this a little bit of mass just so that we can see it. So I'm gonna give it the height of 25 pixels. Now, remember, we are going to set the width at a later date. And at the moment, they're displayed as block level elements. So they'll be 100% width. There's no need for us to set the width here. Now, on top of that, we're still not able to see these elements. So we're gonna to need to provide a background color, perhaps maybe CCC. And also for now, I want to have a border in here. Maybe you'd like padding and so forth. So I'm just going to have a border of one pixel solid, and then we'll give it the color of AAA. So that's quite a dark gray. Now, it's really important with grid systems that they are accurate. So if we have a border or padding, that is not by default included in the width of the element. So to include the border width and the padding measurements within the width, of the actual element, we need to say box sizing border box. And this is a very well supported CSS3 property, even IE8 supports it. So it's a really nice feature. So let's go ahead and save that and you'll notice it's generated the code. Let's take a look at this in the browser. So we have the widths set on here automatically because they are block level elements to 100% and we have the height, and we can just see these now. We have some visual cues as to what's going off. So what I want to do now is make sure that all of my div elements can exist on a single row, on a single line. So I need to make sure that they float to the left. So I'm gonna say float to the left or float to the right, and all of our div elements will exist next to one another. Now, all you can see there is border colors. So the border still has width because we define the width, but the actual width of each div element has been collapsed. So now we need to specify each of the divs widths so that it expands out 
to the entire row and no more. We don't want multiple rows, we just want one row of these 16 div elements. So first of all, we need to come up with the formula. So I'm just going to write this out in a separate variable. The formula is very easy. All we need to do is divide 100% because we are working with percentages as the browser can grow and shrink. So we need to work with percentages. Pixel values aren't going to work here. So I'm going to say divide by 100%. Now it's really important you put the percentage sign in here. And in fact, just to show you, I'm just going to take the percentage sign out and say 100 divided by 16. So 100% divided by 16 will give us 1 16th of 100%. And in lieu of that fact, what it will do is it will set the width of each individual div element to a 16th of the row. So they can all line up on one row. So what I'll do now is I shall set the width to the value of EQU. Now, there's going to be a little bit of an issue here. I won't get an error, but what it's done is it said width and then it's given the number 6.25. So it does the equation and then returns the number. But there's a bit of an issue. This isn't good enough for CSS. CSS needs a unit of measurement such as percentage, pixels and so forth. Well, in our case, we want percentage. So what I need to do is say, look, I want to divide 100% specifically. And now 100% divided by 16 is 6.25%. So that's how you make sure you get your percentage sign in there. You get the correct value, but also the correct measurement as well. So now we've gone ahead and done that. Let's take a look at our grid. And there you go. All of our 16 div elements now have the width of 6.25% and they can all float together on one row. And if I have another div, it will go down onto a new line because it's only going to allow a maximum of 16 div elements to line up on one row. And just to prove that, let's go ahead and add in a few more div elements. Let's add in three more div elements right here. And if I refresh this, you'll notice those three developments come below. So 16 cells maximum. So we've already created a very simple grid system. However, the only issue that we are facing now is obviously this isn't adaptable. When we scale down, we need breakpoints, we need to make our grid a bit larger, we need to make our grid more flexible. However, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to specify by a class on our grid element how many cells I want to exist on a row. So right now we're stuck with 16 cells on a row, but that doesn't make our grid very flexible. We should have the choice of how many cells we can allow between one and 16 cells on a single row. So let's go ahead and make those classes now, and we're going to do it with ingenuity by using those advanced features in SAS. So what I want to do is I want to create a for loop that will loop from zero to 16. That's our range. And I want it to generate a class and I want it to automatically apply the width for a certain amount of cells to fit on a row. So what I want to do now is set the maximum number of cells. So I'll just say max right here and I'll set the number to 16. So this will define our range. We can go from one cell on a row to 16 cells on a row. Now that we've created our max variable, I want to create the for loop. So we say at four and then we set the variable which will contain the number for the current iteration. And then I'm gonna say from one through two, the max value, which is 16. So from one through to 16, every time we iterate through, appoint that number to the i variable. So I will start at one, then go to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then it will stop. Now what I'd like to do is remove this right here, the width property, because we want to specify a class on our grid element, this element right here, we wanna say class, and then we want to say cell 16, for example, or five or 10. So let's go ahead and set that back to 16. If I now go back is I want you to target the grid element. 
and then I want to check to make sure there's a class of cell and then we need the number so I'm going to put in the hash open and close the parentheses and then inside of there I can insert the variable i so that will produce cell one two three four all the way up until 16 so we've now defined the classes and then once we have the classes defined, we say target all of the div elements that are a direct child of the grid, these divs. And then I want you to set the width. So again, we need our formula, which is equation up here. Let's cut that out and paste that in the for loop because I want to say 100% divide by and I'm not going to say 16 this time I'm going to say I so it will be 100% divided by 1 which is 100% 2 3 4 5 all the way up until 16 and likewise the class will match and now all I need to do is say right for each one set the width to and then we pull out the variable value of EQU. That's it. Watch what happens when I save this. So now that I've saved this, it's produced all of this code right here and I didn't need to have to copy and paste it all and it did all the maths for me. Now even though you have quite long recurring numbers, don't worry, CSS can handle this. The browser deals with that perfectly fine. So what are we doing? Well we start at 1 right here and I is assigned to 1. Now what it does is it says 100% divided by 1 is 100%. So each cell is going to be 100% of the parent, which is the grid. So only one cell on a row. And then what it does, it says, right, create the selector that's going to target an element with the ID of grid. And also it needs to have the class of cell hyphen 1. This is the first iteration, don't forget. So that's what it's doing right there. And you'll notice cell 1 target those divs and the width is 100%. What comes back from that equation is 100%, 100%. And then it goes to two and then three and then four and then five and then and so on and so forth all the way down to 16. So one through to 16. So hopefully you can sort of see what's going off there. And now we have this, what I would like to do very quickly, just make sure my classes are right is go ahead and refresh the page. Let's see if this worked. You'll notice it's still showing 16 and that's because we have the class of cell 16. But what if I change that to cell four? So now only four cells can exist together on a single row. Let's save it and then let's go back to the browser. Hit refresh and now you'll notice only four cells and so on and so forth. So I'm going to leave it here in this lecture. And in the next lecture, we're gonna finish off this grid system by adding in mobile breakpoints and using the advanced map feature to map out our media queries and the range that I want for those media queries.